to another episode of Vet Talk. I'm Brother Vince, and I'm an Army veteran. And today I want to talk about stolen valor and homeless veterans. But before we get into that, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And you can find more content from Vet Talk on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Reddit for more content. And if you're a veteran and love to share your story or resource for veterans, or if you're a non-veteran and who want to share your resource for veterans, please feel free to contact me ASAP so we can schedule a meeting. Now that we got the business out the way, let's get into this topic, man. So what I'm about to do is I'm about to post this article where you can see it because I found this story and I think it's crazy to find out that there are people out there that will actually, you know, steal veterans or military personnel items and proclaim and and basically make up stories and say that, you know, they actually served in the military and they did this and that and they didn't do that. And, you know, recently me and my wife, we were talking about that because, man, there's a lot of people that um I don't know them personally, but Sometimes when I'm in veteran groups and I'm reading information from veterans, um, especially from some people who are in the Navy, Air Force, you know, there's some Army people out there. There's some Marines out there um, that are out there lying. And I could tell they're lying because, you know, um, first of all, they're asking for information that help them um, re- retrieve benefits um, as far as like, OK, what, you know, they will ask questions about you know, PTSD related issues. What do you say to the doctor and different things like that? And to me, that's fraud because if you really didn't do time overseas, like many of us have done, then why go to the VA just because you were in a hostile area and say that you had PTSD for, you know, for, for the sake of compensation, I think that's fraud because if you actually didn't do time out there, um, hands across the desert and the sandbox, then um I don't believe that you should be lying and telling the VA or people that you did all of these heroic things that you know you didn't do. And I know that because a little story um I will tell is um when I was deployed in Afghanistan for 15 months, one of the things as an army veteran um we had a hard time with, and this is just me being honest because most people don't know, when we were over there, we would see the Air Force walking around you know what I'm saying? They didn't carry their guns. They were able to get a bear a day. And the lifestyle that they lived, it was totally the opposite of the life that we live. You know, when we would go to areas where the Air Force was, or, um, where they were stationed at, for us, it was very difficult because they had a lot of lights on. And if you know anything about being in Afghanistan and you were on some of these fobs where, you know, it was very hot. As far as, you know, um, us receiving a lot of attacks and different things, we had to live under what they call light discipline, which means we had to live in darkness, basically, you know, so that at night the enemy couldn't snipe us. They couldn't shoot mortars onto our fob and different things like that. So when you go to some of the bases like Kandahar, um, Bagram, when you when we would go there, it would be very hard for us to sleep because we were so used to not sleeping with lights being on outside and we'd be walking around with our weapons with, you know, our magazine inside the weapon, not outside, not in the briefcase and different things like that. And um, that's basically how it was for us, man. So again, you know, when I see people putting information out there to help veterans get benefits and different things, knowing that a lot of these veterans didn't really do what they said they do. It shows me that this is a big um, thing that is going on behind closed doors. And I pray that the VA start cracking down on a lot of these things, because this is why, you know, they're looking at cutting our funders. I'm not saying it's right for them to do that, but I think, you know, the flip side of it is, there are a lot of veterans out there frauding, as I call it, and this need to be addressed because this is what this story is all about. A woman who made up a story of veterans being evicted from a homeless shelter also may have lied about earning a purple heart. So, again, you know, these are the type of things that are happening, and I think that's crazy. I think that's crazy that, you know, somebody would do this. And, of course, yes, she was in the Army. Her name is Sharon 
Tony Finch. Um, she served in the Army from 2006 to 2015. And it says she is suspected of pushing a hoax in upstate New York that local veterans will p- push from a homeless shelter to make room for arrivals of immigrants. So this is what her hoax is all about. And again, this says a hoax. I don't know if it's truly true, but it drew my attention and I wanted to talk about it because it goes along with what I was talking about earlier as far as just veterans fraud and things. And I think this is something that has to be addressed because there's a lot of us out here who really were about that life, who really lived that life. And I think it's not cool for people to go out there and lie and make up, you know, false stories and different things. Because even though like for myself, I went through a lot in Afghanistan, but there are people that I know of like Lopez who was in the 36 engineers with me, you know what I'm saying? He got burnt alive. You know, Sergeant Carbello, he was blown up. You know, these are people that I know personally or know about, um, you know, a female named Brown. She shot herself while we was in Afghanistan. Like, it's different people. When I was deployed in Afghanistan in 08, 09, um, Sergeant Wallace, um, he was in the National Guard from Kentucky, Fort Campbell, if I'm not mistaken. Um, He died. He was adjacent to my motor pool. He got sniped out in Afghanistan. So there are people that I personally know of or no, that died over there. And then I remember being at the flight line in Afghanistan and watching them bring in, you know, body bags while we standing at the flight line. So there are a lot of people that died that, you know, I, I, I may not have known or I know about. And to have veterans on this side fraud just for a check, that's wrong. And I, I'm be honest with you, it's unacceptable and it won't be tolerated. And if I find out, um, you know, I just pray the Lord helps me in that situation to where, you know, I come out in a respectful way and I check them because I think that's wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like you just don't false claim. You can't do that on the streets. If you were blood or crip, you can't false claim. So as a veteran, you shouldn't be out there false claim. You shouldn't be out there um, saying you did something that you didn't do just, c- just because you want to check. Now, I understand that there are physical injuries that we all sustain. I get that. If you filing claims for that, get what you got, get what you deserve, do what you do. But when it comes to PTSD and saying you did this on deployment, when you know you didn't do that and all those other things, don't fraud like that. Because people like me almost die for this. You know, I almost died on Route G. You know, Sergeant Sands, Ben Wall, these are people who were with me in the NRAP. They know their stories. You know, Sergeant Carbello, the guy who got, you know, half of his face blown up and came back to Afghanistan, he saved my life. Like, I got people that can verify my stories. You know, they remember when I got out of my MRAP and I broke down and I cried because that's one of the things that people don't realize. When you suffer from a near-death experience like I did in Afghanistan, it, it breaks you, man. It breaks you to the point to where, you know, you cry out and, and it hurts. Like, you know, it's hard for me to really, you know, go back and relive that memory because I buried it so deep to where I remember it, but I forgot about it. I overcame it. But at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, that situation within itself, that was a tough situation, man. That situation broke me to the point to where I was threatening to kill my command if they sent me back out because I just could not go back out there because it was just too much for me to handle. It was too much. It was too much. And because I did that the next day, and this is what made me feel bad because of that, 22 people from the New Mexico National Guard that was replacing us, if I'm not mistaken, they died. And that was a hard pill to swallow because I felt like to a certain degree, man, I should have been there. Because I remember seeing my homeboy Palmer and other guys come back. And I remember that cold look in their eyes that they had after that tragedy. And I knew that look because I too had that look because of the convoy. I would say a couple of days before that I said that I would, you know, that, that I was a part of that made me feel like I didn't want to, you know, go on the next convoy. So, um, again, when veterans are frauding information, it does piss me off and it does make me upset because it's just like, man, you don't even have to do that. There's so many different things that you can file claims for, but lying about 
having PTSD, lying about some of these things that you say you did and you didn't do, that's messed up, man. And this is for even those people out there who never served in the military that steals our valor or, you know, steal our awards and our uniform and they saying that they were about this life and that life and they know they didn't do that. That's fraud, man. Don't do that. Don't do that, man. Don't do that. Because I would never um, play and act like I was a former NFL player, NBA player. You know, I, w- I wouldn't do that. But let me get into the story so I can go ahead and close this out because, you know, I don't, I'm going to be honest. I really don't even want to talk about this no more. But so um, here goes the story of what Miss Tony Fence, Tony Fence did. It was a story that drew national headlines. Homeless veterans at three hotels in upstate New York were unceremonially kicked out to make room for immigrants. The incident got coverage on cable news channels, including Fox. It came at a time when veterans are facing potential homelessness as COVID emergency aid money expires. It looked like a nightmare for the Biden administration had evidence for claims that its immigration policies were hurting veterans. There was one big problem. The story was entirely made up by a political operative who appeared to have been caught lying about being awarded a Purple Heart. Sharon Tony Fence, the woman who admitted being behind the hoax, claimed on her Facebook page to be a Purple Heart recipient. A claim still in place when checked by task and purpose on this afternoon of May 22nd. The Pentagon has released Tony Finch service records, which does not include a Purple Heart. She served as an automated logistical specialist from 2006 to 2050. She deployed twice to Iraq. In the end, no veterans were displaced to house my grants in New York's Orange and Dutch Dutchess counties. In fact, the evidence behind the claim turned out to be intentionally fabrications, intentional fabrica- intentionally fabrications. As national coverage explodes, local news outlet Mid Hutch News and Times Union broke the news that it had that it was a hoax. The outlets got New York Assemblyman Brian Moore, who expressed outrage over the apparent displacement to admit he and others were tricked by the scam. So as you can see, man, what she did was she lied. She fabricated a story um, from some of the other information that I was reading. Um, And I'm going to put this actual whole full story inside of the description box below. So you can go over. She actually had a nonprofit organization and basically, you know, she made up this story, I guess, to do whatever it is that she was trying to do. I don't know if she was trying to get money. I don't know what her backstory is, why she would do that, why she would lie about the Purple Heart and all these other things. But what I do know is, is that's wrong, because, again, there are men and women who really were about that life and went through what they went through. And that's not to um, downplay her service. That's not to downplay the fact that she did serve um, down range twice in Iraq. Um, I don't know the years that she served in Iraq. And see, that's another part of, um, you know, our story as veterans is, you know, depending on the time that you were deployed in, in, Af- in, in Afghanistan or Iraq or you know, the various places that people deploy, um, your experience can be totally different because there were times when people were stationed over there and there was, in our minds as veterans, there was nothing going on that um would be considered them really doing a deployment because to those of us who deployed and we went through a lot, we don't always consider other veterans um stories to be stories that, brings us to our knees and be like, oh man, you did this and that. Now, a lot of times if you didn't deploy during a certain time and you didn't do certain things, then we laugh at you. We call you a fobbit or, you know, we have various names that, you know, people are called when they really didn't do nothing 
doing deployment and we make fun of them. I mean, let's just be honest, you know, um, we don't always see every veteran serving the same. And that's not to take away from the fact that they are part of the one percenters, but just look at it as a, um, a family relationship, brothers and sisters, you know, you know, um, as kids, we may, as older kids feel like the young kids don't, you know, have haven't done as much as we did, or they might not have been disciplined like we've been disciplined. So, you know, we make fun and we make light of that, you know, and that's just how it is within the military. We do that. And, you know, those are some of the things that people really don't know on the outside, but that's what Vet Talk is all about. It's about talking about these things that aren't being talked about. Because, you know, my biggest thing is I want to talk about after the benefits. I want to talk about after the military. My channel is not geared towards just helping you get benefits. It's about real life and real life problems and issues and things that we go through as veterans and just really want to, you know, let the rest of the world and other veterans know what's going on and I want to help out. So this is the part of it. So um, as always, this has been another episode with your boy, Brother Vince for Vet Talk. And you know what I always say, Vet Talk out. <laughs>